good places. Everyone in this year is planning on uh, moving on to a place that they're going to stay more. There are uh, a few that are uh, considering not doing a full time in yeshiva, but I'll uh, them half time in yeshiva zikr. And the rest of the island is moving on to yeshivas where they're going to be able to stay. Uh, we all want to be. We all want to be B'nai Yisrael. We want to be Jews. We want to worry about the the table of Am Yisrael. Klal Yisrael suffers. We suffer. We're successful. We feel successful. What's the greatest chesed that you can do to the Am Yisrael? All of you. What's the greatest chesed you can do? It's making yourself or at least very learned Jews. Which means he knows how to sleep in the way of Shas. But at least making yourself learned Jews, you shouldn't be a Maratzi. The biggest tragedy to Am is a Maratzi. It causes every evil that there is, intermarriage. It causes the coolest, the hetayim that they make. There are the, the, the very many horrible things that happen among people. Tzad HaShobesh is that they're all a Maratzi. You know, first, many years ago, 20 years ago, there was a reform movement in Germany where they decided to have to bring Jews up to be like Goyim and to change a few things in the, the show. Rabbi wore a garment like a Lutheran minister and uh, they had an organ. They tiny, it's not us or Mamish. So uh, they wanted to make a celebration, it was a reform synagogue. Temple in Manuel, in the Fifth Avenue. So they wanted to make a few years ago, 20 years ago, I think it was, they wanted to make a celebration in honor of the 100th anniversary of the, of the synagogue. So they tried to get people, descendants of the original founders, participate in the ceremony for this uh, celebration of the, of the uh, anniversary. They couldn't find one descendant that was Jewish. Nobody was Jewish, they all intermarried. And the reform movement is such a failure. So you would think that people would stop being reformed Jews. No, they're still reformed Jews. They don't learn the lesson from history. And it's all from Amaratzis, because they didn't learn Torah. If you learn Torah, you have to have chairs for Torah, you have to have from mitzvahs, and you cannot intermarry Chaz Vashon. Now Chaz Vashon is suspecting of that. But I'm saying if you start giving in it's a whole and start be acting like going and not being proud of being Jews and that's what ultimately happens so the only way you can be proud of being Jewish is by learning Torah and making yourself learned Jews Talmud Chachomim or very very learned Jews you have to do that expression it's the biggest gift you have to call yourself or else we'll start going down and down who knows to what there's there's certain segments of Judaism decided to make coolest, besides reform, even orthodox, to make coolest, that uh, say we left in Mahmoud so much, that we make a, be like Goyim, do everything like the Goyim, except find a heter for it. And look at what happened to them, their children get lost in Yiddishka. The only thing that lasts is Torah and commitment to Torah and to Torah and to Mitzvah. That's why you have to go to Yeshiva and learn well and become a Musa when you're in Yeshiva. Listen carefully to the Shemurim, to the Shemurim, and grow to be Tamir Chacham, to me as Hashem Yishol to say. What's considered active like the Goyim? By learning Yeshiva, and I'm a Rangaton, and I'm uh, involved in the learning, I'm involved in the Torah, I want to dress a little more with it than uh, than uh, Yeshiva life. Yeshiva life, they're not dressed so well. Acting like a Goyim. They're not so with it. Acting like a Goyim. Things about when you appreciate how much a Jew is elevated higher than a Goy. Goy, what do Goyim live for? They live for title, live for money, live for wealth. That's all they live for. And we say, Akina, the title of our covenant, see this other day. We're the noblest nation on earth. And the only nation that survived because these are our values. Any nation that has wealth and money and power as its goal, disintegrates, falls apart. There was Rome, there was Greece, right? And, and now there's America that's on the verge of disintegration, people say, because they're fighting with each other over power, you know, over, 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 
importance. Right? Half the country wants to go one way, half the other country, nothing unifying them. There's no spiritual value unifying them. Jews are a nation that lives for spiritual values. The spiritual values are our latest Hashem. I said, right? controlling Tiger, not looking for wealth and for power, that's a Jewish value. So we're, 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 we're way above them all. You have 100,000 people cheering a, a, a football player who made a touchdown. What are they cheering? Power. Right? They're cheering power. Cheering that we overcame the enemy, made a touchdown. Right? That's an expression of Gaisha culture. We have, we have nothing to do with that. We have an identity to that. Why should we cheer power? We're against power. We're against, you know, we, our, our goal is not winning in sports. Our goal is being a Valchese. Right? When you play basketball, each team should be trying to see if the other best team should win. That's how we're here. You should play basketball. To be a Valchesed, to help the others. All you think is you want to have an exercise sport, so you make up as if oh, each team has to win. But it can't really matter. Winning doesn't really matter. Winning a sports game doesn't matter. See, you're a goy when you take the values of a goy. Right? The values of a goy are the power and wealth and money is the to the goy. That's what you see all over. What are the advertisements telling you? Power, wealth, money, tithe, this. If you, the more elements you can put into the Yetzirah, the more you can sell a product. If you look at the advertisements, you walk in the street, it's better not to look at them. But if you ever happen to look at them, each of them either deals with keynote, tithe, or COVID. That's all they do. That's not our, that's not our, these are things that direct our lives. We have to get out of that. Atachas is coming close to Akash Bo and doing mitzvahs, being a Balchese, thinking about spiritual matters, learning to go learning to Or else, get swallowed up by the culture. Get swallowed up and you turn into a goy, a meaningless goy. Yeah. Right? That's, that's the, uh, that, that's what, what, what you have to remind yourself. Be proud to be a Jew. Yeah, to be proud to be a Jew, you have to learn to, you have to be a learned Jew, you have to be a Jew. You learn yeshivas. Yishtai guys, that's all. I learned four years already. How much more do I need to learn? It makes a difference if I learn four years or five years? Six years? Is it grace enough, Kamina? I've been learning for about 80 years. I still haven't learned enough. Okay. But if I'm anyways <laughs> not planning on learning for 80 years, it makes a difference <laughs> if I learn five years or six years or four years. Each year is a big enough, Kamina? It makes a big enough, Kamina, especially this age. Until you're 22, you should be occupied to get married. But until then, you're young, you have to get the values of the Torah, you have to live with it, you have your mind has to be occupied with the Torah. When you learn Torah, your mind becomes pure. Right? You become a different type of person. It's like it's like a mikvah. The more compares learning Torah to a mikvah. You have to, your mind gets purified by having the words of the Torah pass through your head. It's a condition to which will never leave you as young. So you have to be occupied with him until it's a shame to get married. But the main basic should be to that way. You go to work if you need to, but don't leave me when I'm grown. But you have to be also in order to become a true Jew. Full Jew. A true Jew, you know. Always hope to be a full Jew a true Jew. But you have to be a full Jew to be a basic in the old day. That's I'm it. doing this for 12 years already. It's, 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 I don't have any geschmack in it, so it's torture for me. I, I don't have a geschmack. What do you want from me? If you don't have a geschmack in it, because you're not learning right. You know, you have to know that, first of all, you have to chazer a lot. If you go over old stuff, you get a geschmack in it. Don't learn, don't learn to cover ground, to learn a lot of things. Learn one thing well. When you learn something well, you have to enjoy it. It's, it's a it's a psychreche. It's natural that when you learn and understand something, you enjoy it. You'll see that if you chazer and learn over the same thing and get it clear, you understand. everybody enjoys learning. If you're learning too fast or hearing too many fiducians that you can't follow, that's what causes a person to dislike them or not to love them. But if you learn a little bit and try to chazer and try to understand everything, concentrate a little amount and know it well, you went through it too. That's the problem. Even if I don't have a zaykul I'm saying one of the problems is the magid eshir. 
understands, okay, he enjoys it, but the other guys don't enjoy it. There's little, you know, well, chazer, basic principles. If they get it straight, they'll enjoy it. I'm not a, I'm not a guy of Balkishan. I you can't... Not to be a Balkishan. History has the daily turn of not Balkishan. Balkishan writes, I'm going to chop something very fast. And able to respond with the Chiddush, with the Chap, with the Teras. He's born with that. You can never imitate him. People with slow minds have become the better. They say the Prima Godi was a slow mind. That's what they said. And there, there was a there was a Hashim in Europe who writes about himself, but he never could understand anything in the Shir. He was a Kogdin of Rov afterwards, a Hashim in Kogdin. He wrote a Sefer. It's slow, but you learn. You learn methodically, and you get everything straight. You don't learn a lot. You're not a genius, but you can learn slow, and everybody has a chay to do. Everybody can have a chay to do. There's no level of shvachkeit that can't become another level? Yes, someone has some kind of learning Not a disability. Learning We're disability. talking about without disability. No. Just a shvach of al-kishra. Without a learning disability, hard work and review and, and, and learning to lishmo, you become a good one. You become a good one. You won't become a world famous gun, but there are a um, place that you can make them Average, average gun kitchen would be worth for it. Yes, I remember, someone told me, I remember a long time ago, there was a boy in his class in high school. He was so slow, they wanted to learn that machine. And this boy decided to uh, learn on his own. Things are very easy for him. You know who he is? Who he is? Mordechai Gross. He's one of the biggest mother of the world in Eretz Yisrael now. He's a Gosler's best of all. Big mother of the world. That's what's going on. You know? We're throwing him out. But the Shem Zalman is safe. He's kept in the throne. Because he's learning things to be enjoyed. I'm not telling all of you to, <laughs> to, to drop out his shoes. But you can all, if you get clear, learn things that you enjoy, you become Stubborn, be persistent, have to work hard. You can, you know, I can tell you very many examples. I had friends when I was in Yeshiva, bright boys, always knew the, the chap and the answer, they ended up nothing. And I had boys that were weak, in Kishon, but they plotted, they worked hard, they wrote slowing later, and this is slowing. They never said things just for the sake of making an impression of it. For Emmis, you can't be coming to Chabad. But you have to be strong, you have to work hard. You have to really work hard. Every year, for the last 10 years, I started with the newest Chachas, I put in all my Kachas. All my Kachas. It never happened. Yeah, there's no the wrong way, because you expect it to happen like, without any work. <laughs> People, as I'll tell you a story. Once, someone told me what's happened to him. A, a, he met a man in the street in Yerushalayim. And, uh, and the guy told him, I need to raise money for Hamas Eskal. You're close to Chazanish. Could you go to Chazanish and ask him? Uh, no, no, could you ra- raise money for him? So he said, uh, yeah, I'll give you all the money you want. All, all the money you want, one condition. The one who asked was a relative of Chazanish. He said, if you go into Chazanish and get a bracha for me that I should know Shas, I'll give you all the money you want. Yeah? Okay. The guy went past the bracha of Chazanish. And uh, what first this guy wanted to Chazanish said, it's going to be a very good one. You give him a bracha, 
So, so you're on your trip. So you saw the elephants in Kenya, right? 
was so much. So I can buy a picture of an elephant. It's the same thing. So you take a picture. But what can you do with money? Money doesn't get you. Everybody, everyone that has money knows money doesn't get you happiness. Get you happiness with good marriage, children, fine children, a sense of accomplishment of yourself, doing something for others that makes you happy. Money makes you into a decrepit person, a selfish person. So you have money, you have power, what do you do with it? You're a horrible person. What good is it? It's a Rahmanism. You're a person, it's a Rahmanism. And besides, what happens with the children? You know that most rich people have problems with their children. Most of them. Why? Because children grow up spoiled. They see their parents have no values. They have no values. They just use their money to buy things. They just lose. Then for buying the latest gadget and the latest car. The children grow up corrupt. Your children grow up corrupt. That's the horrible thing you have children. Because if you're corrupt, if you look for money and wealth and power, the children are corrupt. Every one of the movie stars that are making millions of dollars, right? Sometimes you read write-ups of their lives. They all have children that are corrupt. Children are unhappy and drugs, right? Broken marriages. They themselves have broken marriages. These are the stars. These are the, these are the, the stars of American society. People have broken marriages, corrupt children, right? Because they have money. So what do they do? What, what can they do with their money? So this guy is very funny to ride up in a Mercedes back and forth in the same street. What if you have a hundred streets to ride on? Does that make you any any more ridiculous? So I have New York, I can walk all, drive all through New York in my Mercedes. <laughs> what am I doing? Nothing. I'm driving a Mercedes. So the Mercedes drives itself, right? Mercedes talk. When I speak into it, it finds my location, where I am, where I'm going to, and soon to be cars that will go automatically. Gee whiz, wow, cars that go by themselves. So what, where are they going? The problem is where the car is going. <laughs> not, not having a, what is a car if you don't have anywhere to go with it? <laughs> right up and down the streets? Money is worthless. It doesn't do any good. Money is only good if you do something with it. If you're kind, you help people. Poverty is a horrible thing. Not having something is a horrible thing. Not having money makes you pay. Destroying it for a person. Pour some pain, torture, hunger. That's a horrible thing not to have. But to have more than you need, it's just a waste of it. You need more than you need. It makes no sense to have more than you need. I don't find some good things with the money. If you buck them down with it, you're going to go, they're going to become wealthy, and instead of having one person learn, they're going to support five people learning. Well, first of all, you can't be sure that you're going to be wealthy. No matter what good ideas you have and how energetic you are, where the hell are you left? You can't be, you can't, you never can know what to make money or not. Right? I know just now a, a multi-millionaire, maybe a billionaire, who knows? Everyone heard his name. Virtual bankruptcy because of COVID. He borrowed money from a bank to build something and he was making no money in his business. No one knows. Mr. Rachman was a billionaire and Mr. Rachman went bankrupt. He got back a lot of his money. The richest people in the world went bankrupt. You can't be, you can't, you can't know. Rachman once told someone I know, he said, I became rich for the mistakes that I made. Whenever I thought I was right, I, I, I lost money. It's the same as your money. Wealth and the same money. You can't be sure you should be. Fantasy tells you to be rich. Like fantasy says that you're the most married, the most beautiful woman. And you, every, everything's the most beautiful, like in the movies. That's fantasy. But, you, but, but fantasy is not true. It's, it's, the truth is, unfortunately, not like that. You don't know whether you can be rich, you know, whether you can be poor. But what, one thing is in your hands. That's to be a good person. That's in your hands. That's the only thing in your hand, and that's the only thing that matters. So you can be poor and, 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 and be, a, be a fine person. You know that Heim Vilinska had a son called Viskovov, the big genius. He became the Viskovov, right? And, uh, that, uh, I agree with that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, 
some of his family, some of those in the family of Khan told me that once when rich people in, in uh, Paris came to came to the came to Khan Gillespie. Did he rush to go? No, no, no. He came to Khan Gillespie. And he says, you know, you have a son as a genius. What you need to do is send him to college. He said, you went and wasted his time. Send him to college. He says, Khan Gillespie, why? He goes to college. He goes to college, get a degree, become a doctor, whatever is the word. And what if he doesn't go to college with Khan Gillespie? You know a man, he's a poor person. With no shots? Yeah, he'll go shots. He'll be a poor person. Who will have behind his head? What better thing can I expect from my son than a son who's poor and run through shots? Nothing can be greater than that. If he's rich, he won't run through shots. That's the greatest thing there is. Is to be poor and run through shots? That he's satisfied with himself and you're happy. I never met a rich person that's happy. I met them in our home that are happy. Right? And they're not rich necessarily. But they have some kind of difficulties. They have to borrow some money. But they're happy. They're fulfilled. That's what makes a person successful. His life is successful. He feels fulfilled if he's accomplishing something. Right? Money doesn't make you happy. George, uh, Mark Twain said, no, George Bernard Shaw said, that you can tell what God thinks about money by the people he gives it to. <laughs> so Rashiva said to get rid of the cell phone. What if my cell phone's totally clean? Everything's filtered, no garbage. The cell phone is just my access uh, 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 to people. Th that's a good step. That's a good step. The problem is you can't concentrate on that. I was talking to you now, and every second somebody would be tapping me on the shoulder saying, excuse me, excuse me, can I see something? Can I be able to talk to you? I'll interrupt you every second. The cell phone is everyone saying, excuse me, excuse me, can I talk to you? You have a, you have a buzz, always going off. You have to, whatever you're doing, you're interrupted. And if I'm not interrupted, I'm thinking, who's going to buzz me soon? My mind is always distracted. I can't concentrate. If you know that now in universities, they give a, a, a course to every student that comes in, in some universities, for comprehension of what they read. Because people can't comprehend what they read. They read and they don't know what's going on. Why? Because in order to read, you have to concentrate on what you read. If everybody's reading, who thinks what's going to happen? Who's going to call me? How am I going to get interrupted? All for the cell phone. The cell phone dumbed down the whole world. It made them all unable to comprehend what's going on. That's why you have to have short sentences for everything, right? With a question mark to tell you whether it's a question or whether it's an exclamation point to tell you whether it's you can't have a you can't read a whole paragraph. It's hard to it's hard to read a paragraph. Both of yourself. You should if you don't you don't you don't you learn not to think. You learn to think and not to be distracted. That's what's all the problem. There was a big lawyer, he's not from he asked his son should come into the machine. So he said, not come, you're not a friend. Yeah. And he wants his son to come into the machine. And he says, of course, you're a boy, you want your son to come in. He says, I'll tell you, when I was in, in my class at the university, the best students in law school were the ones who the machine. Yeah. So I want my son to be a successful lawyer. I want him to come into the machine. You know? <laughs> you should be, you should be learning how to think. How to think straight, how to comprehend, right? How, how, how to concentrate. But the cell phone is sort of You can't have someone tapping on your shoulder every other day. Then if, even if he doesn't tap you, as I said, then you think, when is he going to tap you? Yeah. What about? A flip phone. You want a phone that's not a smartphone. A flip phone. Can they call you every minute? Yeah, it's, a, it's not as a smartphone. A smartphone has in it the potential of the highest, his moves, right? Washington, I don't know, whatever it is there in Google. But 
the, but the flip bone just in people who told you. Now, according to that argument about distraction, is there for flip bone also. If you want to be concentrated, you want to learn to concentrate, you don't get it. You don't use a flip bone. You use it a half hour a day. That's a half hour a day, you use it to make phone calls and get phone calls. And not every day, every moment. There's a guy, there's a guy, uh, once in the uh, someone was sitting next to the bookcase. So he so dialed it in the phone and said, Did you get me this in the safe? This is a nice message. Looked like good for him and good for the guy. Everyone's distracted. I saw the song Yeshiva says the phones are off. That's uh, people mad with that? Yeah, 100%. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't bother. I didn't realize when the baby here, the wives are expecting the baby. So they didn't realize when they call them up and they were going to go to the hospital. So they asked the shoes, they didn't get them. They didn't get them. Okay, my friends, I told you enough, okay?